Hey everyone, this is Melissa, and I'm the Talkative Introvert. Welcome back to another episode of Interviewing an Introverted Witch. We weren't able to finish asking all our questions in the first episode, so we're doing a part two. So thanks again, Mia and Delina, for agreeing to do another episode with me. How are you both doing? I'm good. I'm doing good. good. How How are you? I'm good. I'm hungry, but I'm good. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) I made eggs on toast. Ooh. Mm. Nice. That sounds good. I don't know why that's so simple, but it sounds so good. Yeah. I'm trying to learn how to feed myself. Oh, that's a good, good skill to know. It's really hard, like, getting anything away from diet culture. And so I'm mm-hmm. trying to be like, how do you feed a human person? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm making lists of everything I like to eat. And one of those things is eggs on toast. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's good for you. Eggs have, like, B vitamins and whatever yeah. gotta get Omega the proteins threes. in yeah get the good fats from the butter yeah the good and the bad fats but you need some fats to run your brain <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah my my cousin was like you should try intermittent fasting and i'm like bitch i do that already and it hasn't done anything <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what, is, yeah. What, am, what am i supposed to be doing i don't even eat breakfast yeah (laughs) my mom does that she only eats between like it's like 11 and 4 or something i I hang on a second later sorry i'll be right back (laughs) so what were you saying oh just my mom does the intermittent fasting um there's this lady i follow on youtube who's a dietitian and she says that maybe it won't do anything Except for, like, casually, you'll just eat less food because there's less time for grazing and stuff. But um, they said it doesn't make much of a difference versus, like, a calorie deficit. Yeah, Uh, that makes sense. But it is also, like, a much easier way to inherently add in a calorie deficit if you're just eating over less time. Because your tummy can only hold so much. Yeah. But... Like I said, I don't know shit about how to feed a human. <laughs> I'm trying to figure <laughs> that out without getting blasted by gross diet culture. So yeah, it's difficult. We well, usually right, just I'm back. like use an air fryer for everything. Air fryer. Air you can fryer. literally put everything in it. Yeah, I have an air fryer and an instant pot. I can cook anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so back to you being a witch. So for people who didn't listen to part one, you shouldn't be listening to this, first of all. Um, (laughs) Go to part one and then come back. Yeah. So I don't really remember what we last talked about. I'm still, I still haven't edited it. I mean, I guess listeners wouldn't know that. Back to listen and then stupidly started at the beginning, like 20 minutes ago. And so I don't know what the end is like either. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I did like have some of our questions and Mia's tired so I don't know if she has a question to think about right now but I think one of well so one of the things I wanted to ask you because you did like mention your significant other in the last episode Mm. and I was like hmm so is he also I don't know if you call them wizards or or, like whatever the male equivalent is (laughs) it's a witch still so okay in, in that specific instance with wizards and stuff. So a witch is, is anybody that practices. Um, and then there's the term warlock. Um, I have always understood the term warlock to be somebody who has betrayed the coven. Um, like somebody mm-hmm. who in good faith that you invited who works against your group in malicious ways. Um, and so that could be a man or a woman. A oh. wizard is um or in between (laughs) it could be any old person um a a wizard is a lot more like studious in in terms of of magic um when you go into D, &D, like Mm -hmm. a wizard is is like intelligence based (laughs) they learn from (laughs) books instead of from practice and there are some some people in the pagan community that identify as wizards that um do come at it from a very academic sense rather than a spiritual practice kind of sense. Um, Okay. I don't know 
I don't know off the top of my head anybody who may like, except for ironically, call themselves a wizard. <laughs> like I think there's some people that probably are like, I'm a wizard. <laughs> Um, and like he mostly serious but also a little bit fucking with you um uh so generally it's just a, a witch um unless they're wiccan and then it's a wiccan sometimes they're like i'm a druid it's different um yes he was he was raised pagan <laughs> as <Okay>. well <laughs> um and and we actually met through um i knew his parents before i knew him from festival Oh, um, and I thought he was underage because there was another guy who was another son of adult pagans that I knew who was like 16. And so I was like, yep, children of adult pagans that I know they're underage. And then he was like, what's up? I'm 20. And I was like, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> I totally changed it. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a lot less, um, like, we both describe it like religion isn't really a coping mechanism for us. Okay. And so isn't something that is, like, aggressively in our faces all the time. I'm a lot more than he is. Like, I still do mm-hmm. a lot of the cast practices. Um, but he is mostly just, like, <laughs> like, what time? This is so sweet. I had a whisker that I had picked off of my cat. Like it had dropped and I had picked it up out of the carpet and I put it on a bookshelf to keep. And he was like, oh, dust. And he swept it off. And then he was like, oh, no, I'm an asshole because that was a cat whisper. <laughs> and it was so cute. It's so sweet. So mostly he just understands all of my bullshit and why it happens and thus tolerates it. <laughs> if there was a circle, he would come. Uh-huh. Um, but he would participate and like do that. But he doesn't on the reg. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did that, that makes sense. Yeah. No, that makes complete sense. It's like basically my whole family are Catholic, mm-hmm. but I haven't seen someone go into a church since my grandma died, which was like in middle yeah. school. Yeah. <laughs> so I get that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so like another question I had is like, are there restrictions? Because you you said like um, it's not really a coping me- mechanism for you guys, but mm-hmm. religion for me like growing up in like the Christian church or whatever, there's like a ton of restrictions, especially Mm -hmm. like the church that I came from is very specific. Mm -hmm. Um, They took like the Bible super literally, like, yeah, like women don't cut their hair and like women wear women's garments and men wear men's garments and stuff like that. Like, you know, there's no premarital Mm -hmm. sex and, you know, yeah. So is there like something like that? Like there's restrictions that you just absolutely don't do. You're not supposed to do anything like that. Um, it's mostly that there's like different levels and understanding of, of the universe and how it works. And, um, I sort of a little bit talked about it last time. Um, and then Wiccans have, they do have that kind of structure. Um, like they have what's called the threefold law, which means that anything that you do and put out into the universe will come back to you threefold. So always be good so that nothing bad comes back to you. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's, it's very... It's very group to group. I know there's like Alexandrians and Gardnerians, like they can only walk a certain direction in circle um, because it, it keeps the movement of the of the energy going the same direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, but our group didn't have too many of those. Um, they're mostly they're mostly like centered around things that happen in ritual rather than day to day. In a first level, there's the general learning how to think very intentionally and 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 understand that other people have their own shit that they're dealing with and and then in second level, you can kind of let up on that a little bit and do what's called shadow work, which is where you sit with your own feelings and and like try to understand where your emotions come from and how to deal with them and how to control them. Not in like the I have no emotions way, but yeah. like if somebody says something shitty to you and you react a certain way, like I have a knee jerk cry response um, just because like I have a lot of shit going on in my head. I got the ADHD, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when people yell at me and I'm really mad, I start crying because I'm so angry. Um, 
And so shadow work is like sitting down and figuring that out about yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, that could take a lot of time. And then after that, th- with the third level, like it's it's once you've done your shadow work and you, and you work with intention and then you, you begin to teach and shit like that. I totally went off track. But mostly, um, no, <laughs> we don't we don't like tell people to act a certain way, at least in my group. Um, yeah. Except for like, you know, be excellent to each other. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, don't, don't be a dick. The don't, Bill and Ted way. Yeah. Just just don't. I don't know. Don't don't be a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Don't don't try to enforce your will upon other people mm-hmm. that that are just being other people, you know. Once you get into the higher levels, you you do there is like a a, a sense of asserting your will on your will on people. Um, but it's it's having the understanding and intention to do it in such a way that when you tell the universe to do something, that it doesn't call your bluff. <laughs> yeah. Um. And that was related, unrelated. But, yeah, I don't think we had, like, yeah, premarital sex is fine. Wear a condom. (laughs) Make sure that they also want to have sex. Yes, consent (laughs) is important. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, see, it's that thing where, where if somebody was like, name this tenant of everything that you grew up about that you know for your life. And I'm like, um, 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 pie. (laughs) I don't know. <laughs> but no, I don't not in the sense that like not in the same sense as like Christianity or it's yeah. like don't do this. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. That's like such a such a different world than I grew up in. Yes. Like it's so foreign to me to like not or I don't know. Yeah. Growing up and not and not being told that you can't do this or whatever. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, anything that means you can't is is mostly, hey, you're seven. <laughs> I yeah. need you to stop. <laughs> Don't put that fork in the electrical outlet. Yeah, it's like, hey, um, I know that sounds like a great idea. And you can think about it later when I'm not literally legally responsible for your safety. <laughs> But <laughs> <laughs> so do you believe in the whole I guess karma thing like it'll come back to you yes if you're, okay um but in a sense that like I was talking about with intentionality so mm-hmm. when you put a request out to the universe the universe listens and it can hear if you're not sure and so oh. and it's going to give you the answer that that it that it says is appropriate. And so like, if you were to hex somebody or curse somebody, you got to mean it because <laughs> otherwise the universe is going to be like, you're just being a bitch right now and it's going to kick your ass back. And so it is everything. Everything is about intention when it comes okay. to paganism. Um, you don't want to be quiet, sad mouse. Who's like, um, he was mean to me and it would make me feel better if he broke his leg. <laughs> You know, <laughs> the universe is going to be like, fucking go sit in the corner. <laughs> so there has to be like a genuine reason for even if it's it, it, they're not not like they have to have like there has to be proof or something. But like you can't casually be like, I'm mad at you today. Mm-hmm. You have to to have the will and the reason to back it up with the universe. If that makes sense. I don't know. I think I'm just stuck in my like Christian mindset. Cause I'm like, is yeah. the universe God? Like that's. So that's, I have <laughs> actually had conversations like that before, and it's very similar. I find Christian like just terminology very limiting because, mm-hmm. um, because when when you guys say God, I hear individual and. And when I say universe, I mean literally everything. But I know that like when Christians say God, they mean literally everything. And and so it's like I, I once talked in circles with this lady for like 45 minutes being like, bitch, we're saying the same thing. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you that my word means more than one. And your word is inherently individualized. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and she was like, but God is everything. And I'm like, 
I hear you and I agree with you. <laughs> We're not talking about that anymore. We're talking about the etymology of a singular pronoun. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, it, it, it can be that way in that, like, when I have described the energies and everything, people are like, well, that's God. And I'm like, yeah, probably for you. That's just similar. <laughs> like, they, they serve a similar purpose. Without yeah. mind being a coping mechanism like I was talking about. That makes sense. Yeah, I think it makes sense. I think I'm 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 getting it a little bit. Some so people like, get confused when I refer to religion as a coping mechanism. <laughs> and I don't mean it in a negative way. I just mean yeah. it like not it's a thing that's that's there that I appreciate and I use, but I don't run to people and and cry to circle and, and tell them all of my woes and that's my that's like my I don't know how to finish that sentence. <laughs> no, I get that. Like um like if someone's having some type of hardship, their first thing is like to do I don't know, to go to church and yeah, they pray. ask for prayers, they talk to their pastor, they they every Sunday they go to that group and they say, I'm having a really hard time and then the group puts their hand on their shoulders and they say, We're here for you, we pray for you. Mm-hmm. Um which is like super sweet. And, like, totally awesome when they, like, have pure intentions like that <laughs> instead of being weird and gross about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's not something that I seek out of paganism. Okay. I see what that you makes, mean then. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So, okay. So, you're talking about, like, when you put into the universe. So, that makes me kind of think of, like, is there any such thing as, like, good magic and bad magic or, like, you know, good rituals or bad rituals, like dark, you know how people like yeah. in movies and TV shows, they talk about like dark magic or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. There's not really, um, some people who are like working, they, they call it the white magic. Like it's all of the energy is there and working in like, it's called shadow work. Um, mm-hmm. like it's not, it's not evil. <laughs> it's, it's just very introverted and, and very, like the nature of humanity versus the, 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 we love cheese and we have bake sales. Oh, we're wicked. Um, (laughs) Like Buffy, they call him the want a blessed beast. Um, But yeah, I don't, I don't believe that there's, there's good magic and bad magic, but there is um, a hesitation from a lot of people to attempt to actually exert your will on stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I don't I don't think it's bad. I don't think hexing is bad because, you know, some people really fucking suck and they need a kick in the ass and you are not like physically capable of physically going over and kicking them in the ass. And so you send something <laughs> over. <laughs> um, so it's not really like so like the the act itself or itself is not necessarily like black and white, but it's more like whatever your intentions are. Is like yeah. the, it's up to the individual, whether it's like good or bad. Yeah, there, there, there are good witches that do dark work and shadow work, and there, there are bad witches that do light work. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't like to call it dark work and light work um, because of like that inherent thing of labeling anything black as being bad. Oh, yeah. um, and like white magic's good and black magic's bad. Like that doesn't, it doesn't really work for me. <laughs> um like it is like the shadow work term is like working on yourself to understand your motivations and where you're coming from and whether or not you should work on those um but yeah there's there's plenty of bad actors that use that use it as a scapegoat Mm -hmm. and there's plenty of good actors that are like, well, my best friend just got cheated on and he's over there being a fucking dickhead and maybe all of his tires get slashed. <laughs> you know? Sounds reasonable. But, but we just, we spiritually slash all the tires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like that. I like that ideal. Because, you know, yeah. like, all I know is whatever you see on media or whatever. Right. So, um, yeah. but I, I like that. I like that idea. Yeah, and even if you get into, like, the really dark stuff where people are, like, graphically abusing the animals and, like, sacrifice and stuff like that, for me, Mm -hmm. like, a sacrifice is not a sacrifice if you are not losing something. And so, like, if you had a goat, you would feed that goat and you would care for that goat because that goat is important to you. (laughs) 
and then you were offering it like halal or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they say a prayer and they thank this goat and they're like, thank you for being a goat. We will eat you. You are delicious. And thank you, God and Allah, for, for making this goat for us to eat and all that stuff. I don't know what they actually say, but I think that's what they say. <laughs> and um, <Yeah. laughs> Like that, like what is a sacrifice if it doesn't actually mean anything to you? So, yeah. So you like respect the animal and thank them for. Yeah, you raise it. It's 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 your animal that you are you are raising to to offer as as thing. And then typically you would eat it. <laughs> like you don't want to waste it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but oh, um, so I have you eat the animal. animal that you sacrifice. Typically, because otherwise, like, what the fuck are you gonna do with this goat? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've never I've never been to a sacrifice. I've never experienced a sacrifice. Um, my mom may have. I don't remember if it, if she did, it would have been in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, it's not like the satanic panic thing. Mm-hmm. The the people that do what few instances of that, that there are, are not working paganism. They're just like, we're going to snort drugs and kill things and act like badasses, you know, like mm-hmm. <laughs> they're not, <laughs> they're not actually doing a work. They think they yeah. are, but it's just, people sucking so i guess like <laughs> what's what's the intent of a sacrifice then it, it would depend um like i like i said i've never done in one but like if you needed to work a big project like if you were like i need to get the fuck out of this country and do this because like my ex is doing this and like i have to take care of myself and my people and and i need it to happen now very fast very quickly and i need it to happen magically then you would you would be like this thing that's very important to me and and us as a people um i will offer up um just like that little oomph like help me please and i really fucking mean it (laughs) you know (laughs) yeah um that kind of thing but i've never actually like i said i've never actually been through one so i don't have the example of what it would have been done for i could google it really quick (laughs) (laughs) sure (laughs) but yeah like so in terms of like you know the ancient greeks they always offered up the best part of the of their meal Mm -hmm. um no i have to fucking turn off my ads hold on (laughs) well let me read this article (laughs) um that's just this is dumb florida man why you do this anyway this is all satanic panic stuff that's not gonna help um (laughs) So, um, yeah, like it's it's just offering something that means a lot so that the universe knows that you mean business. And like legally, they can't really stop you from doing that if the animal is not suffering. Um, yeah, they try like neighbors call and then ruin rituals and then cops can't do anything. And so it just sort of makes everybody mad at each other. <laughs> yeah, if the animal's not suffering and you're taking care of it as you should, because what is mm-hmm. a sacrifice that, that you chain to a Like if you just chained it to a tree and then you were like, okay, it's time. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, what does that mean in terms of you offering up anything to the table? Yeah. I think it's weird that people, I mean, I understand the hesitancy of like being accepting of these like sacrifices, but at the same time, at least you're respectful to the animal and you raised it and it had right. like a good life versus, you know, like an animal farm. So, yeah. You yeah. Know. And like, there's, there's bad people from all religions that, that hurt animals. Um, and, and they should be stopped. <laughs> we should not hurt the animals, <laughs> but um, if it's humane and it's, it's said, I'm sorry, we're so deep on this tangent, but no, it's, it's good. <laughs> I like animals. <laughs> animals are super cool. You should be awesome to your goats and love them. Um, don't let them pee on you because sometimes they do that. <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes they're stinky and mean, but sometimes they're cute and precious. And and if you're if you're good to them and it is a sacrifice, like that's. Like I said, it's literally like you were you were losing something that is meaningful to you for a greater mm-hmm. purpose. Oh, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> I don't know like, if I could either. Um, I'm having a really hard time because I want to start a hobby farm. Um, and 
I don't know if I could eat my chickens. <laughs> yeah, that'd be so hard. I don't even yeah. know. Like, <laughs> it gets really hard to not be attached to them like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I know this lady I follow on YouTube. Um, she has a recipe called Mean Rooster Stew. <laughs> so, yeah. Because she's mean got little kids. Mean Roosters are about the only ones that you can get rid of. Yeah, yeah, because she's got little kids and she doesn't want them to be afraid of going to the chicken yard. And so she has a special recipe called Mean Rooster Stew. Oh my God. <laughs> like that, I could get behind. She says it's spicy. <laughs> oh, it's that's the rooster funny. Spicy. <laughs> it's a recipe yeah, do you, do you guys cut that out or not? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But Mia, do you guys eat your animals? <laughs> no, there was some discussion about whether or not we were going to let some um, sheep graze on our pasture or whatever and then have them be, you know, rendered and everything at the end of the season. But I think we decided against it because we would have gotten too attached to them. Sheep are really fluffy. Did you know sheep oh, yeah. have tails? Like whole ass dog tails? And what? they cut them off. It's fucking crazy. Ew, that blew my goddamn that. mind. So like, I was imagining like a little stumpy, like shitty goat tail, you know, like just like yeah. a little floppy thing. Mm-hmm. But I was watching this this other video and like the the sheep's come out with like whole like like long flowy dog tails, but they get so grody and like like they're super unsanitary, and so they dock them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh. But there's this farm in LA that has. Like, I think they're, like, one of the, the hippie-dippie vegan types where they're, like, protect all the animals as they naturally are. Um, and so yeah. their sheeps have tails. <laughs> and it's just fucking crazy to see these sheeps walking around with, like, full-ass tails. Like, fluffy, like, yeah. sheep fur tails? Like, yeah. cloud? Yeah. That's well, it looks like, you know, like, think of a big fluffy white dog. Mm-hmm. And then stick that tail on the back of a sheep. Oh. It's weird. That's not what I was thinking. <laughs> it's it, it's weird <laughs> yeah I'm gonna google that later <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the sketch yeah but I've seen I've seen sheep out in pastures before that have looked like can just have mud and poop and everything because they they're not groomed on a, a regular basis so yeah. it gets to be a really bad situation yeah it's That's really so unhealthy isn't that crazy looking so weird it's so majestic yeah it's like a magical unicorn tail except that it's a sheep <laughs> how weird <laughs> isn't that weird <laughs> but like how is it so unsanitary if it's like a dog it's, tail so it um see how it like curls okay. in back towards its butt mm-hmm. um, it that doesn't lift up like a Tail. and their their bum is like oh. licking up crevice. and so it gets it gets all grody and shit covered and then maggoty and then it can get cuts and badness so yeah okay so it's they're really, essentially yeah. just pooping on themselves yeah yeah they're just like shitting all over their tail <laughs> it gets really <laughs> it's, it's really gross and infected and so they they just dock it right away um and then the lambs are like i am a lamb here i am <laughs> <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yeah. No, I am it's super so behind sheep docking, but they're crazy to look at with a full tail. <laughs> yeah. And then there's the sheep that are called hair sheep, which are raised for for meat. And so instead mm-hmm. of being fluffy and woolly, they have like a really thin, like wispy hair, and they keep their tails because it's not all woolly. Oh, interesting. It's crazy. You know Sorry. a lot about sheep. I remember how I said my friends called me Wiki because <laughs> I just know the oh. most random bullshit <laughs> and I just regurgitate it. <laughs> like you hit the random page on Wikipedia. And I'm like, did you know that it takes eight pounds of pressure to break human skin? <laughs> what? I do not know that. <laughs> I think it's actually less than a pound. So I don't remember. Like break it's either eight pounds or skin. Like, yeah, to anyway that's not a whole lot of weight no it's not oh my god we're fragile yeah i didn't realize it was that fragile we're fragile okay 
<laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I did actually have a question about wildlife, though. Yeah. Um, Because you do see the, like, witches in movies and whatever. And I'm mm-hmm. sorry, I always, like, quote, wit- or, like, movies. That's, you know, all That's I know. Where the information is available, so. Yeah, so <laughs> that's my knowledge of it. Um, But they always have a close connection to wildlife, and they connect with wildlife and sometimes even talk to wildlife. Mm-hmm. So is that, like, a thing that you have this close connection to, the animals of the world? I do, yes. but I also have a healthy understanding that most animals could kill me. Um, <laughs> my mom has a rule, and I, I heartily agree and accept this rule, that if if shit goes down and it went rabid, I have to be able to take it in a fight. Okay. Um, and so, like, the bigger dogs are, mm-hmm. are a little too big, you know? Um, and so I'm hesitant to approach a deer, <laughs> <laughs> but that said, sometimes when we're in circle, like fucking five point bucks, just walk up and are like, hey, what's going on? Because <laughs> my parents live in the woods. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so, Pretty like, cool. I'm not I'm not opposed to nature, but I I also know that it's their house. And <laughs> I choose not to engage in their house. If they're in my house, then then the rules are all broken. But um. I talk to stuff. I talk to my plants. I talk to my cats. Um, I talk to random birds, but I also don't want to get. I, I talk to things. my plants too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I actually explained to a black widow yesterday why I had to yeah. switch her. Because <laughs> oh. <laughs> she was right in the path where me and my bare feet and legs walk all the time past my plants. And so I had to be like, hey, <laughs> you're gorgeous. I love this you're giving me. Your your little red hourglass is so shiny and pretty, and you're a beautiful dominatrix bitch. But I have to kill you with this frying pan because I don't want to get bitten. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> and then I squished her, and then I put her in my tomato bed. <laughs> well, that's very nice of you. Well, that's nice that you put her in the tomato bed. Yeah. I, um, I rescue spiders. I rescue... I don't rescue caterpillars because they eat my plants, but um, like any spider in the house, if you release it outside, it'll probably die within like a day. And so I just sort of find a nice little corner in my house and I'm like, here, move here. And then I, mm-hmm. as, if they're in their web eating moths, totally hang out. But if they're like in my bed, I'm like, hey, buddy, <laughs> we're close to home here. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> I keep house spiders, which does kind of result in webs, which sucks. But I like the I like the free moth removal, you know. Yeah, um, I get that. I um, <laughs> I don't like insects at all. I really hate them, the creepy crawlies. Like, mm-hmm. but like sometimes I feel bad. Because, you know, they're just trying to make a home yeah. for themselves. And I did have, like, a little spider friend that I kept in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And because um, it was just nice. They, like, collected the, the flies and all yeah. the little, you know, bugs that your plants get and whatever. And mm-hmm. it was just, like, chilling up there. And one day we were doing spring cleaning and Brandon just took out the vacuum and just sucked it up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, my friend. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh no. I know. And I was like, no. sucks. I mean, like, I appreciate him cleaning the house, but I wasn't expecting that <laughs> yeah. to happen. Oh. And I totally forgot. Yeah. I rescued a spider out of my shower this morning. Oh, nice. Because, like, the bathtub is, like, their ideal hangout because they're, like, I can see every wall and all the bugs are going to fall in and not come out. And so I just have to take a little piece of toilet paper and be, like, please walk on this but not on my arm and (laughs) put it in a corner somewhere away from the tub. Dylan and I watched a spider kill a fly the other day. It was intense. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we just both happened to be in the kitchen at the time that the fly hit the web and we were, like, oh, shit, it's about to go down. (laughs) <laughs> and we stood there for like 15 minutes watching the spider and this fly. Oh my god. It was that crazy because the fly That's pretty stopped. cool. Dude, it was full on nature fight, man. 
<laughs> but this, the fly like stopped all at once. So like it was buzzing and it was stuck in the thing and it had one wing that was loose. And so it was just like buzzing the shit out of that wing. But then that wing got caught and the fly kept buzzing, which means that the flies can independently make that noise, <laughs> which is crazy. Oh. <laughs> and then the spider bit the fly. Oh. The, the spider bit it and it kept going. Mm. And we expected sort of like a slow rundown, you know, like an engine or something. Um, no, the fly just, it, it took about two, three minutes. And then it was just like, and we're done. <laughs> and it just stopped Dang. all at once. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining like two people just... Just staring at a spider web. You know, because like from a distance, you're like. was not. (laughs) (laughs) So I was like, look at it go. And Dylan's like, holy shit, look at it go. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just like imagining like your neighbor just looking at your window and was like, okay, what are they staring at? Why are they just standing there? And it was our kitchen window, so it would have faced the street. (laughs) Just me and Dylan just like looking at it like, whoa. (laughs) <laughs> I did learn that Venus tri- fly traps mm-hmm. after they eat a fly, like after they trap it, they die and then just grow yeah. another bud. Yeah, it takes so much energy to move that quickly. Yeah, yeah. There, that's, that's why you don't tease them. Mm-hmm. But I'm if just you're like, man, <laughs> yeah, I've I've learned a lot about how plants grow in the last year because um, I started gardening and. And so there's there's a lot of plants that just have a really strong base layer. And then, yeah, they'll just shoot up little little tiny clones. <laughs> and then eventually there's so many clones that it just looks like a giant patch. It's neat. Yeah, it's crazy because I'm just like, man, one meal and you're done? That is short life. It is a lot of calories when you think about it, though, like compared to what a plant takes in. That's true. Like one whole fly yeah. and they're pretty the small organism. yeah they're they're deceptively tiny like because when you see the pictures they're all zoomed in Mhm. yeah because i saw it in real life like my sister-in-law has one and i'm like man these are super tiny yeah i want to see like a carpet of one in like the the forest somewhere that'd be, mm-hmm. so- that'd be interesting they're so they're just so fascinating to look at mm-hmm. too because it's just such yeah. a weird plant but anyways I did want to ask you, what was it? Oh, can you guys hear that? Can you hear Link barking? I can. Bark, bark. <laughs> okay. It was something earlier, but I thought we all knew, so I didn't say anything. <laughs> it's your podcast, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's a corgi, and corgis are very vocal. They're and they bark at dogs, you. but they're tiny. Yeah, but like it sounds like a big dog. Yeah, he does sound. He's. I thought. I thought it was like a lab or something. No, that's that's a tiny corgi. That's funny. It's pretty small. <laughs> Can't you got the lungs of a big dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, it's kind of nice because people are probably like scared. Like our um our our post lady doesn't like dogs, and when she hears Link bark, she like stands in her lawn. <laughs> for a minute i don't know why it's like i'm not gonna release him out you know yeah but, but she'll just like wait for a second and then she'll go put her <laughs> mail she chose the else, wrong so. profession she really yeah, did <laughs> like, i don't know why? man you get excellent benefits yeah <laughs> once you're in yeah. you're fucking in for life yeah that's true yeah okay hold on let me check what he's barking at doggy feet i hear doggy feet <laughs> Tip taps. Tappy tappies. Oh man, my neighbors have dogs and I have not had dogs for like 11 years now. But sometimes when the neighbor dogs bark, my instinct is to get up and go to my living room to yell at my dogs that I do not have. <laughs> I just have that instinct to be like, Jobu, shut up. And Jobu died like six years yeah. ago. Oh, okay. I think he's, I think he's done. I heard his little feet. Yeah, well, <laughs> his nails on the hard, hardwood. Okay, I don't remember what we were talking about. Um, Venus fly traps. Yes, we were we were talking about plants, which was which came from whether or not I'm a Disney princess. (laughs) 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 
They always say to talk to your plants. Yes. Yeah, you and I apologize to mine constantly. Like, while I'm pruning them. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, we'll get you cleaned up. And then if I knock something other, I'm like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's just a little haircut. Yeah. <laughs> no? Yeah. Caterpillars, though. I'm brutal with caterpillars. <laughs> I'm I'm very aggressive with caterpillars. I, growing up, we had tomato worms. Oh, those are fun with the UV flashlight. And I still cannot I cannot deal with them. I yeah. can't even touch them. Like yeah. if I saw one, I would probably just be like back away slowly. I've those been things are brutal worms since I was very small, like like earthworms. Um, and and now. Like, I'm not oh, afraid really? of them anymore. I just think they're very aesthetically displeasing. <laughs> so caterpillars are very close to that. And so I work very hard yeah. not to actually touch the caterpillar. I'll get, like, a stick. And um, usually I just take my scissors and, and leave it on the leaf and just cut it off, cut it in half. Um, but if I have to pick up a caterpillar, it's like a like a process with like mission impossible and like a stick and like this other stick. And then I try to get it on the ground so I can hit it with a rock and not actually touch it. Oh my <laughs> yeah. God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're icky. I don't want to touch them. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> like I said, I got, I got no room for caterpillars. <laughs> they ate like most of my basil last year. Oh no. It came back. Cause I caught them early oh. enough, but I had this, um, you know those like big garden bags, like the felt ones. Mm-hmm. I had one of those that had like ten or ten or eleven basil plants in it, and then um, they were just like disappearing. <laughs> and I parted it, and there were like nine cabbage loopers just like in there. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and I had to murder them Yikes. all. And that one I got chopsticks, and I had a cup full of soapy <laughs> water, and so I would pick up the worm with chopsticks and put it in the water. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you going with those chopsticks? Oh, I've got some caterpillars to deal Out with. Oh, back. I gotta save my basil. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad they came back. The basil, not the caterpillars. Yeah. They got giant. I love basil. Basil smells so good. Mhm. I like mm. it in the gnocchi soup at Olive Garden, where it's all boiled and cream. <gasps> mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so hungry. I haven't eaten yet. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm always hungry, so Me? I guess I shouldn't. I can't blame it on not eating. I'm less hungry and more uh, like my mouth gets really bored. Mm-hmm. And so I just need to, to chew on things. I really want a banh mi. Is that the? Ooh, it's like a Vietnamese right? sandwich. It's oh, like French neat. bread. Yeah. It's good. Ironically, the best banh mi I ever had was from a vegan restaurant. Really? Huh. It's not very vegan. I mean, oh, I yeah, they something. don't exist oh, anymore, but it was it was called Mother Downtown. Oh, never heard of it. I also don't like seek out. Oh well, yeah, they're out of business now. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so let's see. <laughs> Mia, did you have any questions? Um. Not that I can remember right now. I, I don't think so. Um, Let's see. Let me look at my list of questions. I know there... Wow. There was one. Oh. So when people find out you're a witch, what is, like, their misconception or, like, what is their reaction to that? I mostly hang out with other witches. So this really only comes up at work, um, if it comes up at all. Um, there are, I don't know if I've ever gotten the, like, I'll pray for you kind of thing. Mm. Um, I know people that have absolutely, but usually those people have like Christians in their family, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and all of my family is tangentially pagan that I like know and hang out with. Mm -hmm. Um, even like my Catholic friend is like super witchy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah. Most that doesn't really come up very much, honestly. Like I've had some people be like, "Well, what's that?" And that happens a lot. Is usually because they just have no idea that that term is even real if it if they've heard it before, because um, they just assume it's cartoony fake. 
So I'm I'm not the best one to have an answer. I know that a lot of people will be like, that's not real. Um, oh, I had one guy be like, you really think you're a witch? And then like threaten me with like, it was some bullshit. Because <laughs> I shared a thing that said that that maybe you shouldn't try to be the Joker or Rick Sanchez or Tyler Durden because the point of their characters is that they're they're horrible people. And mm-hmm. and he got really offended by that. Yeah. <laughs> and like <laughs> got really shitty because with me. Because he's a horrible person. Because he's a bad person. And he started like like saying that he was going to call his Catholic ancestors down on me and do like that. And I'm like, you realize that this is just a picture of a tweet that I shared, right? I didn't, I didn't write this, honey. (laughs) I've been nothing but cool to me, cool to you. And you're being a flaming dickwad for no reason. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that's really bizarre. It's really weird. Mm -hmm. That's like the most I think that's happened. It'd be like, you really think this is real? It's like, hey, this is my fucking religion, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's federally recognized, dude. <laughs> oh, is it? Yes. I don't I didn't even know that was a thing that a church can be federally recognized. Yeah, yeah you can get a, a pentacle on a tombstone in in the military. Um you can mm. get you can get special dispensations. I think this officially happened like on paper in, in the early two thousands. Um, but like if, if somebody dies in overseas, then, then they have the right to have the kind of rights that they would want done. Like they don't want like basic pay or basic Christian rights, um, mm-hmm. for everybody. Cause like there's Muslims and there's Jewish people and there's atheist people and there's pagan people. Um, and so, yeah, it is, it is a federally recognized religion and, and they can offer, um, like, I know there was a guy on TikTok who in boot camp got permission because everybody leaves on Sundays to go to church. Mm-hmm. And he was like, what about my church? And his guy was like, hey, if you need to, to pray to a tree, tell me. <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> hey, remember how you said I need to pray to a tree? And he was like, you have one hour. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> and he did it. And he, he did it through all of all of uh, boot camp. Like he would he would go have his time while everybody else had their church time. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. How progressive. Yeah. Isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah. No, that's really awesome. Yeah. I could talk about pentacles versus pentagrams. <laughs> Everybody gets okay. that wrong. So I don't even know what that is. Like, well, I mean, I've seen a pentagram, but I don't know what a, a, what? A pentacle? A pentacle. So a pentagram is actually just a five pointed star that's drawn in that way with the lines before it. A pentacle. Oh, okay is once you put the circle around it um, and everybody calls that a pentagram, but oh, a, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yes. <laughs> yes. So a pentacle is, um, so there's the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water, and then spirit, mm. which is the human part. Um, and so the pentacle, the, um, the right hand, like when you're looking at it on the right um, mm. is earth and then air and then fire and the water. And then the, the top is spirit for the person. Okay. And it's like the physical incarnation of our connection to the universe. And it's it's our cross, you know, like it's it's that oh, there's okay. um, there's in the three levels. The first level is right side up. The second level is upside down. And then the third level is right side up with a triangle in it. Um, and that's all that means. It's it's my cross. Yeah. <laughs> all the, all the things that y'all associate with wearing a cross and stuff like that's. That's what mine okay. is. Okay. Yeah, I never knew that. I just, yeah, I don't know. Nobody does. Because when <laughs> I look at it, I just think of like, have you ever watched, I don't know if you guys do like anime or whatever, but like oh. Full Metal Alchemist. You ever heard of that? They, I think, have nine points. Yeah. Um, so do you guys do alchemy? I mean, not, I don't, I mean. So alchemy know, is a scientific study. Um, okay. It is it is the conversion of matter into another type of matter. Um, mm-hmm. It's not really, it's not nearly the same as it was when we were discovering chemistry. Like it's what chemistry used to be um, mm. was was alchemy. Um, there are some people that still practice it in the sense of them being like an herbalist or mm-hmm. or like a metallurgical type of dude. Um, I don't just because science. Ugh. 
<laughs> I, I know the science. I do not want to actively work and study in the science, like in that sort of way. I like this. Yeah. I like life science in that yeah. I want to let plants grow and and shit like that. Okay. But like um, botany. yeah. Well, grassroots botany, <laughs> stewards of the land type of botany. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Which is also kind of a really Christian thing. It's funny. There's there's some Christians whose gods I'm like, that's awesome. And then other Christians I'm like, you feel icky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know that. No, goes I totally get it. Like, <laughs> like my sister in law, I mean, we're not married yet, but Greg's sister. Um, when she talks about God, I get warm fuzzies. And I'm like, Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> um and that lady I talked about, um, Roots and Refuge Farm on YouTube, um, mm-hmm. she is like hard into Jesus. Um, she has like a medically documented like mystical healing event. Like she should not have gotten better, and she did very quickly. And mm-hmm. she used to be a minister and all that stuff. And now they're they're homesteaders. And most of the time, sometimes she gets a little intense when they start yelling about how much they love God. I'm like, that's too much. But when <laughs> <laughs> but when she's just like talking about her connection to the earth and the stewardship of the land, I'm like, that's so warm and fuzzy. I love you. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely different types of Christians. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think the church that I was in was too, they took, they took the Bible too literally. Uh, and I don't know. I'm not into that. I like the whole the spirituality, like the reason why they love God is because God's all loving and, you know, loves mm-hmm. his children and mm-hmm. everyone yeah. is equal in, in his eyes and whatever. That that yeah, part of yeah. God is, yeah. I can get good behind part. that. Yeah. I could I list like a that. bunch of movies that are super pagan. Okay, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Frozen 2. Frozen 2 is oh, a pagan really? book. Yeah, Moana. Mo- Moana's really Polynesian, but um, mm-hmm. like that connection to it. Um, Mm -hmm. my neighbor Totoro believe it or not is very pagan Um, Uh, yeah I can see that let's see people say brave I didn't like brave Um, it's Celtic and it's mystical but eh, I have have problems with brave that I could go into (laughs) (laughs) that could be its own episode (laughs) that could be its own episode on the problems that I have with brave (laughs) <laughs> oh practical magic is amazing i've um, never heard of that one. Oh, honey you've never seen that oh, oh my god <laughs> you gotta watch you some practical magic it's sandra bullock and nicole kidman who are sisters who That's are really um, good they're did Very their sheltered kid okay did their dad <laughs> die and then their mom died and then they're raised by their aunts is that how it is uh i don't remember specifically that I think their dad died and their mom died of a broken heart. And so they were raised by their witchy aunts. Yeah. And, um, and, and they, Nicole Kidman's character starts dating like a really bad dude um, who like starts literally attacking her and spiritually attacking everybody else. And they accidentally murder him and um, they have to, to deal with like his spirit coming back and like possessing her and shit. It's really cool. <laughs> That's yeah. a really weird description of this movie. Yeah. It's a really good movie, <laughs> but, though. But this movie's amazing. <laughs> okay, I'll and look it's, it up. It's, it's, it's very, like, it's like the power of love between sisters and stuff like that. Um, that movie's amazing. <laughs> Midnight Margaritas. Midnight Margaritas! <laughs> <laughs> There's a scene where they dance around and like they're they're like singing the lime and the coconut song and and she and um oh somebody just got broken up with or something and they're upset and she's oh, yeah. like there's only one way to fix this and they like shoot their hands and magically turn on the blender and they're like midnight margaritas <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> this movie's That's amazing <laughs> Halloween Town is pretty pagan like compared to to the other one, fucking Hocus Pocus, that one. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You I know what's Halloween Town? Have you seen the Wicker Man, the old one, the '70s one? No. Okay. Um, 
that movie it's got Christopher Lee in it when he was super young. It's from 1973. Um, it's technically a horror movie, but I have never been able to conceive of it as a horror movie because I just kind of think of it as like a like a British European pagan biopic. <laughs> but this, oh, really? <laughs> this guy goes. Um, he's a He's a, he's a policeman and this girl is missing. And so he's sent to this island to find this girl. And the people there practice an old religion. And and he gets like seduced by the hot barmaid, but he's a virgin. And so their their apple orchard is failing. And so they sacrifice him at the end of the movie. Um, just so that you aren't like, oh, my God, this got really scary. Because like it's technically a horror movie. But I watch that movie like it's just a historical biopic. <laughs> it's fucking amazing not the Nicolas Cage one don't watch the Nicolas Cage one you gotta watch the Christopher Lee one from 1973 do they do is it like just a remake or did they do like a they fucked it up it is a remake but they fucked it up and then they made a follow up to that Um, oh there (laughs) there is a sequel called The Wicker Man 2 and it's about this fucking couple who are missionaries and they come to the island and they're getting a fight because he wants to have sex but they're promised to each other but they're not married mm-hmm. she's got this promise we and they're having a fight and she's like silver ring steve we have a silver ring and for years across circle we would look at each other and be like silver ring steve <laughs> that movie is horrendous don't watch that one but <laughs> <laughs> The fucking silver ring, Steve, kills me. Um, Anyway. (laughs) Frozen 2 had a very profound spiritual effect on me. (laughs) I liked Frozen 2. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful, and it's pagan as fuck. It was very beautiful. I liked it. It's gorgeous. It's lovely, and it's deep. Uh, This Mm -hmm. lady, before I saw it, this lady on a podcast was talking about how she took her daughter to it. And how, like, the adults are watching a very different movie than the kids are watching. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, though. I like, I think that's why I like Disney movies. Because you can watch it as a kid and as an adult. Mm-hmm. And still, like, resonate with it or still enjoy it and get the humor and stuff. Okay, so we got Wicker Man, Practical Magic, mm-hmm. Frozen 2, and Moana. Let me see. Because it's hard to Google pagan movies without them being like, here's 30,000 horror movies. Um, yeah, I know. They're always like horror related. Yeah. Um, oh, there's the there's a Ghibli movie um, that's based on the borrowers. That movie's Ghibli. Pagan. Yeah, it's it's the secret of Arietti. Um, so how do Ghibli. you spell that? G H I B L I. It's the the guys that make Kiki and. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. And Howl and stuff. Mm-hmm. They have a movie called Arietti. Um, there's a UK dub and a US dub. I like the UK dub better. The US dub is fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's the one that you can find. Um, you know what I really liked in a twisted way is the end of um, is it Paranormal Activity three? That's when they're back in the eighties. Um, and in the end when they have the group with all the ladies coming up to the house <laughs> that's just cool in an aesthetic way <laughs> um, yeah that's the one in the 80s without the murder part <laughs> <laughs> without the part where they kill everybody and kidnap children <laughs> and summon oh. demons <laughs> it's hard for me to watch those kinds of movies like the any, like, exorcist-type movies? Anything's because, like, you know, the whole Catholic thing yeah. in my family. You got deep roots like, in there. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, my God, this can actually happen. Yeah. <laughs> this might be real. Yeah. Yeah, I usually end up Googling the ends of horror movies before I get to the end because my anxiety is just yeah. way too much. You know what's really good is um, it's called Kill Count. And, and it's James A. Janice, and he gives a um, like a synopsis of the movie and goes over every kill in the movie. Um, 
And like the point is that you like watch the movie and then you watch his things, but I use it to screen all the movies I want to watch. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. And so I'm like, is this aggressively upsetting or will I love it? <laughs> yeah, it's like that website does the dog die? Yes. Or, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It just tells you if the dog dies or not in the movie. Yeah. And you know whether or not to to continue. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Bark, bark, bark. Yeah, I can't. It's hard for me to deal with movies where the dog dies. Like, I don't cry very often, mm-hmm. but in a movie, if a dog dies, I just can't hold it together. Like yeah, the one, yeah. It's not allowed. And so yeah. your brain yeah. is just like, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah. Like, did you guys watch? Ugh, I forgot. It's that lady that doesn't age. Ugh. I forgot the name of the movie. It's like she had like a white dog and a freaking what's his name was in it. Han Solo was in it. What's his name? George Uh, Harrison Harrison Ford. Ford. Yeah. Harrison Ford was in it, but he's like older and she he knew her from when they were young, but she got like hit by lightning or something. And so she couldn't age anymore. The age of Adeline. Yeah. Oh, is it that one? I've not seen it. I don't know. That's just the one that sounds the most like what you're talking about. <laughs> I think that's what it is. But um, but yeah, it has a sad scene, scene about her dog. Oh no. She's remained useful 29 years of age for eight decades. Yeah, it's an interesting movie. But I was like, man, did you have to put that? That's yeah. Is that really necessary? It really isn't. <laughs> It could have done it done without it, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel about a lot of shows. Like like The Boys and Invincible. Like a lot of people are like, they're so amazing and so gritty. And I'm like, you could tell the story without being like fucking gross about it, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Like you know, I can't um I have to when I rewatch <laughs> When I rewatch Futurama. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys. Oh, no. Oh, no. I know exactly yeah. what you're Anymore. talking about. No. The dog. Yeah. The one that yeah. waits for him. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. I can't that watch that That messed me up for days. Yeah. yeah. I'm still traumatized by that. Cause, like, I tried yeah. to watch it and, and I, I think I made it halfway through the episode and I had to pause and be like, you're 27 years old. You could do this. And I'm like, no, Seymour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's like who wrote this episode they should be fired uh, I think they got <laughs> an Emmy this, this yeah, get approved. Right? they have a lot of episodes like that mm-hmm. they do it's you nice. feel it coming when you're like no <laughs> <laughs> uh, man but yeah the episode was very traumatizing I can never can never watch that episode ever yeah the rest of the show is good it shows that shows really good. It's kind of like like the office. Do you know that episode of uh, Michael's Tots or something like that? I don't know. I haven't watched the office. I've watched probably altogether all of the parts of the office that um, that are good, mm-hmm. but I haven't. Um, I have not sat down and watched the office. I can't. I can't get into it. Oh. <laughs> Well, there's this episode it's called Michael Scott's Tots, uh-huh. and he goes to like, I can't watch this episode either, but he promised like all these third graders or something, because it's like one of those like low income type yeah. schools, you know, and he promised all these kids that he would pay for their college tuition oh, no. if they graduate high school. Oh no! And then yeah, and then comes to find out he can't afford it. And they did like this whole thing. They like welcomed him to to the yeah. school and like all this stuff. And I was like, why? Who wrote this episode? Why did they do this? And it was just Futurama all over again. Oh, no. no. Yeah. And I'm like, these these writers. My goodness. Yeah. But the rest of the show good. <laughs> 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 just that one episode. I just can't. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that and the scene with Pam's art. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it hurts me. Oh, little Pam. Okay, anyway, so we go, like, straight away from... Yeah. I Actually, I don't think I have any more questions, though, on it. I don't know, Mia, did you have any more which questions? Um, no. 
How's your nose? So. Do you want to talk about that? Um, I generally just try to stay away from this room. <laughs> okay. That's fine. And um, I I don't really come in the house for that purpose. So, mm. and when we're I'm home alone, I'm generally out in my trailer. So, mm-hmm. it's usually not a problem. Yeah. It's just like something I'm aware of. Yeah. Mm. Did you guys do the whole cleansing or not yet? No. No. Well, not for me, but. No, I know we have um, a bundle of sage from farmers from the farmer's market last year. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't I don't know if we're going to do it or not, because it's not like harassing us or anything. Yeah. It's like, you know, the spider in your bathroom, you know? Yeah. Like, hey, buddy, this is cool and all, but I got to take a shower. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It's like. You know, it's great and all, but don't say hey to me at three in the morning. Yeah, I'm sleeping. That's good. I mean, like, if they're not, if he or she is not bothering you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it it hasn't been a problem for a while. That's good. Yeah. Now you guys are just roommates. (laughs) Yeah, some deadbeat roommate here. (laughs) Doesn't pay rent. There's a lot of comics about that. Where, where they, they, they call somebody on the Ouija board and it's like, do you live here? And they're like, yes. And they're like, cool, your share of the rent is $600. <laughs> and then it stops answering. <laughs> That's funny. Maybe he likes the podcast. Maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He he features in it a lot. <laughs> Every time I do one with you. More than, more than last time? Mm-hmm. Or is it just last time? Has it happened more than last time? Ugh. Uh, we've just that talked about a it. lot. Yeah. Your microphone started buzzing. It's because yeah. you touched it. Oh, is it is it better now? Nope. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, he's talking to us. He is. How about now? Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Oh no, nope, okay. it's back. It's back. Oh. <laughs> It's cause you ca- it's cause you called him a deadbeat, Mia. You did appreciate that. <sighs> Sorry, Ray, you're not a deadbeat. Oh my god, it stopped. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, time for me to get out of this room. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we can end it there then. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks for getting back on. And Delina, yeah. if you ever want to do another episode, it doesn't have to be witch related unless you like that. Um, just let me know. Just text me. Sure. And we could totally do another one. Like it could literally be about anything because my podcast doesn't have any specific theme or <laughs> any subject. It's just p- pretty much whatever I feel like talking about. Nice. Yeah. Mia knows what I'm about. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mia hears you doing any subjects Mia knows what I'm about <laughs> alright yeah for sure <laughs> yeah and if I think of anything that would be cool I could talk about ghosts and cryptids and Ooh, cryptids and I don't know enough about aliens but I could figure some shit out yeah but yeah. I could talk cool. about I could talk about ghosts and cryptids fucking all day okay yeah awesome. like um Ooh, we should do a Halloween episode this year. Yes. That'd be fun. We could like fun. talk about everything Halloween related. Halloween is um literally my my favorite holiday. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, it's my favorite Christian holiday. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. all about the aesthetic. Mm-hmm. My favorite holiday is bread holiday, but y'all don't have that. So <laughs> Which one's that one close to? Lamas, it's in August. It's August 1st. Okay. August 1st. Well, that's nice sure because August that. doesn't have a holiday. Um, yes, the... exactly. Cool. I'll try to remember that. I'm going <laughs> to look at all the, all the holidays. I forgot for the last fucking two years. Oh, I can <laughs> talk about how we, move, um, how we move counterclockwise. So when you look in books and stuff, most pagans work clockwise. Um mm-hmm just because it's easier to read. But in cusp, which is the the practice that my parents developed with their circle in the 90s, um, 
everything like planet wise moves counterclockwise. Like the earth spins counterclockwise. Electricity spins counterclockwise. Um, like the, the setup of the veins in our bodies, I think are counterclockwise. And so our circle, we call the elements counterclockwise and our sp- our wheel of the year is also red counterclockwise. But if you Google a wheel of the year, it will probably be clockwise. But okay. isn't that fun? Yeah, that is interesting. <laughs> like we're all backwards. Yeah. <laughs> Some uh, if you, all y'alls are backwards. But yeah, if you just Google wheel of the year, um, mm-hmm. it'll bring up hundreds of different things that explain the same thing. Um, and that'll list the holidays. Okay. Well, it's it's really easy because it's there every six weeks. And Yule is on the 21st of December. In bulk is six weeks later. And then Ostara is on the, the 21st, 22nd of April. <laughs> I think. <laughs> and then Beltane is May 1st, and then Letha is six weeks later. And then just it's all six weeks. Okay, cool. That's so easy. <laughs> so easy. It's based on the agricultural calendar, and it makes shit much easier. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes Easter, I'm like, which Sunday is that again? With the first? Oh, yeah. Well, but they moved it. The Pope moved it a few years ago from and like, April to March. I wasn't crazy. Know. Oh my god, because <laughs> I'm not into that. I was like, I thought this shit used to be in April. <laughs> yeah, no, because it's just it weird. My birthday every year. Yeah, we would celebrate used... Easter and my birthday at the same time. Yeah, and I'm just like, how's the Pope allowed to tell us when Jesus rose from the dead? <laughs> like, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> well, we already know that it can't be correct. Because yeah, it's wrong. If they strung him up on, if he rose on a Sunday, he would have had to be strung up on a Friday. And Saturday is the Sabbath, and you can't have anybody strung up on a Saturday. So you can't. True that. So it's wrong somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know where, but it's wrong somewhere already. The Pope's just like, I have vacation on that day. I can't make it. We gotta move <laughs> Easter back up. <laughs> I'm terrified for the time when they finally decide to move Halloween to a Saturday because then it's just going to be on fucking any old day, you know? Yeah, which defeats the purpose of it being on the 31st. Yeah. Like the, yeah. I, I mean, my Halloween is always going to be on the 31st, but mm. fucking. <laughs> it's just, you know, just to accommodate all the parents who don't want to take their exactly. kids out on a Wednesday night. Exactly. And like, I get it, but I also want to know the day that all the kids are going to be out. I don't want to have to figure out the day that's going to be covered with kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's just so dumb. I'm like, you know what? The the yeah. world doesn't revolve around you guys. Okay. It does, though. And it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is Christianized. Everything ever. <laughs> <laughs> Even well, the I mean, holidays are Christianized. I mean, the parents <laughs> complaining about taking no, their I kids know. out on the weekday. I know. <laughs> that is a thing that bothers me. It's yeah. when they're like, <laughs> they're taking Christmas. And it's like, you took everything. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Nobody's fucking fighting you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> uh, that is we'll see. Week. I don't think it'll happen. But I don't know. People are pretty... Uh, persistent when they want something. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm an itchy person. <laughs> Feral goblin with my plants. <laughs> oh, that sounds okay. nice. Yeah. Feral plant I, goblin. Yeah. I'm pretty introverted. I mean, I think I mentioned this, but I got like 93% or something. I haven't taken the test. I just know that that people exhaust me. <laughs> I probably took the test in high school, but I'm sure it's even higher now. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think it gets higher the older yeah. you get. For sure. I mean, I don't really leave my house. Are yeah. Maybe 100% introvert someday. Okay. No people. Not allowed. I'll probably be at like <laughs> 99% like yeah. when I'm retired. <laughs> I'm going to move. And I'm going to live in a house on chicken legs and... When women have <laughs> med problems, they'll come see me. And all. Okay, Baba Yaga. Yes. The Baba Yaga. 
I'll just live in the forest. I like the thing that says that Baba Yaga is probably a title and, and like, it's just a term for, for older witchy women that live in the woods and, and that over the stories historically, they're probably different women. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah, I'll just be a Baba Yaga. In that's the woods. cool. Yeah. That sounds like, like, a, like a dream. Fly around in my, in my cauldron with my, my kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds ideal. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have my little <laughs> cottage garden and my growing all my nightshades and shit. Anyway. <laughs> all right. Thanks for making it to the end. If you enjoy what you hear and want to stay up to date on the show, please follow me on Facebook and or on Instagram. You can also check out my website at the talkative introvert podcast.com. All the information will be on there as well as in the show notes. If you want to help support the show, Please review and rate the podcast and share it with your friends and family. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you guys in the next episode.